Hello, I'm Jaron. Today, I will tell you how to mitigate network core channels will preserve performance. This is the joint work with Chao Kang and Ang Chen, all from U.S. University. Suppose you have a file server that stores very confidential information. For example, they launch code for a bomb. Unfortunately, the server has been compromised by a malicious software which tries to leak the secret to the outside. One straightforward way is to pull the launch code into a packet payload and send the packet to the attacker. However, this could be prevented by a firewall which inspects packet payloads. An alternative way is to send a normal TCP packet with launch code encoded in the packet header field. The firewall which only inspects packet payloads will not find it. This is called cover story channel, which leaks secrets by changing packet header fields. The attacker could also leak data by manipulating the timing of packets, for instance, using large gaps to include 1 and using small gaps to include 0. This is called a core timing channel, which leaks secrets by changing the packet timing. Our work aims to mitigate both of them. Core channels are a difficult problem. Firstly, its detection is difficult due to non determinism This comes from two aspects. First, Protocol fields are non-deterministic. For example, given a TCP initial secrets number, it could be a field modified by the attacker. It also could be a field of a normal packet. But there is no good way to decide which case is true because TCP initial secrets number is almost random. Besides, protocol events are non-deterministic. The timing pattern of packets could be controlled by the attacker and it also could be caused by normal network variation. Second, after detecting suspicious flows, the mitigation of core channels required to operate on every packet. In today's data center, the traffic volume is at a terabyte per second level, so it requires pretty efficient per packet processing. Over the years, many defenses have been proposed. Let's look at two examples. The first, the first example is TCP initial secret number channel, a storage channel. To mitigate it, we can add the same offset to the TCP synchronous number of every packet. The second example is IP timing channel. After detecting timing channels using statistic-based methods, we can add a random delay to destroy the suspicious packet timing. Note that both defenses are running in software. The existing defenses have a common problem, performance penalty. There are two reasons. First, per packet operation running in software is very inefficient. However, in today's data center, switches usually have to process terabits per second level traffic. Second, adding random delay incurs actual delay to TCP connection. But many flows in data centers are delay sensitive. Because of these reasons, there is no practical deployment in today's data center. Here we ask a key question. Can we mitigate core channels while preserving performance? We answer this question with yes by proposing other system networking. Networking uses the recently proposed programmable switches, which can be programmed with high-level languages like P4. They can run at line speed, the network community has used programmable switches to improve network performance, like designing new load balancers, doing traffic engineering, etc. But we believe they are also ideal candidates for core channel defenses. In the rest of the talk, I will show you how to build an efficient and performing preserving core channel defense using programmable switches. In NetWarden, we turn a programmable switch into a defense platform. NetWarden locates in the middle of the protected server and the user. It works as a TCP proxy, but the major duty of it is to mitigate core channels. It checks all passing through traffic to detect and mitigate core channels in real time. More importantly, NetWarden can preserve TCP performance. Networking has several key features. Firstly, it can effectively mitigate both core channel and uh, timing channels. It has high throughput. 
we can achieve 100 gigabits per second throughput per switch port. Besides, it can preserve TCP performance. For both channels, there's no more than 1% performance penalty. Finally, it is totally transparent to any host. I have talked about our motivation, the limitation of existing approaches, and give you a high-level picture of our approach. Next, I will talk about networking design in detail. It is not easy to build a core channel defense in a programmable switch because programmable switches uh, are originally designed for traffic forwarding. They have a very limited programming model. To solve this problem, we propose hardware software co-design principle. First, let's take a deep look at a programmable switch. A programmable switch has two layers, the data plan and the control plan. The data plan is programmable ASICs. It can do header modification, maintain per flow state. Data plan also provides nano section level time steps, and it can run at line speed. However, data plan has very limited memory, and uh, it can only do limited arithmetic computation. The control plan is general purpose CPU. It has abundant memory and can do complex arithmetic computation. However, control plan can only run at software speed. So as we can see, the data plan and the control plan are complementary with each other. In networking, we use hardware software co-design to build an efficient defense. Considering the points and the cons of the data plan and the control plan, we propose hardware software co-design principle. Concurrently, per packet operation and uh, constant state maintenance should run in the data plan. Batch operations and the growing state maintenance should run in the control plan. Because the bandwidth between the data plan and the control plan is not infinite, so we should also minimize the crosstalk. According to our code design principle, we implement RTT measurement, per flow state maintenance, IPD maintenance, and header modification in the data plan. We deploy packet caching and the statistical text in the control plan. Because of the time limitation, I won't go to the details of each function. Please see more detail in our paper. Our second challenge is to preserve connection performance. Before I talk about the solution, let's look at why we have performance problem. Suppose a user is downloading a file from a server using TCP. After the connection is established, the server will send a batch of data to the user. The user will send back an ACK packet to indicate that she has received the data. The server will send more data to the user, usually double sets of the first run, and so on. Now let's look at what if we add actual delay. Because the increase of the RTT in the same amount of time, we transmit the last data. Therefore, existing mitigations incurs performance penalty. It also tells us that to maintain the same performance, we can create the illusion of the same RTT for the sender. To preserve performance, in that model, we design two performance boosters. The first one is what we call ACK booster, which maintains the same RTT perceived by the sender by generating spruce ACK packets in advance. We also have another booster called the Receiving Windows Booster, which sends more data per RTT by enlarging the receiving window size. Because of the time limitation, I only talk about ACK Booster. You can read our paper for the details of the other one. ACK Booster creates the illusion of the same latency as perceived by the sender. In ACK Booster, networking will First, dynamically measuring the RTT between the server and the user by observing their traffic pattern. Then, it will pretend to be the receiver and uh, generate an ACK packet to the server when the ACK packet should arrive if there's no defense. The server will send the next batch of data and the networking will catch the data and send it to the user in the meanwhile. Because the data received from the server has been acted, so if there is packet loss between the networking and the user, it cannot be recovered by the server. We handle this case by retransmitting the data from networking cache directly. Next, I will show you the evaluation result of networking. 
We developed a networking prototype which runs the interfinal switch. It has about 5,500 lines of code. We assume there's an attacker who wants to leak an ISA key work over channels. We test networking with real-world applications. We have our two baselines. No defense means no core channel defenses are deployed. Naive defense means the defense does not have performance boosters. We first evaluate the effectiveness of networking in core channel mitigation. The x x here is IPD magnitude. The y x here is the decoding rate. As we can see, when there is no defense, the decoding rate can reach 100% accurate when the IPD is 800 microseconds. When we apply the naive defense, it's rendered the decoding rate to a random gas. And the networking is very close to a random gas. So networking can mitigate core channels effectively. Next, we evaluate how well networking can preserve performance. The x x here is time, the y x here is sending rate. When there is no defense, the sending rate is stable at 15 megabits per second. Naive defense incurs 25% percent performance penalty. Networking only has 1% performance deviation. We repeat the experiment for different network, network conditions, TCP variant, and uh, applications. We always observe similar results. So networking can mitigate core channels with minimal performance loss. There are more experiments we did to evaluate networking. Please see more detail in our paper. Now let me conclude the talk. We are motivated by mitigating network core channels. We find the existing approaches have performance penalty. To address that, we design networking. We propose principle for hardware software co-design and we use it to address true challenges. Our evaluation results showed that networking can mitigate core channels with minimal performance loss. We released the source code to the GitHub repo and for myself, I'm looking for internship in 2021 summer. Thank you for listening and uh, I'm happy to take any questions.